Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 55. Anyway, uh, Monday night, February 24th. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, today was a technical day for me. I spent pretty much the whole day um, working on my computer, just trying to clean it out making a few changes. Uh, I was having issues with my email. I still am. Um, I have a plan B just to change the email client. Right now I'm using uh, Microsoft uh, Live Mail. Um, I think I'm just gonna go back to uh, Outlook Express. I remember when I went from Outlook to uh, Windows Live Mail, uh, it was kind of weird for me. I, I didn't like it. Then I got used to it. That's what that's what always happens, right? Um, now I'm used to the Windows Live Mail. Like, I love the way it's laid out. It seems a little more kind of like uh, airy, you know? Um, the Outlook is uh, a little bit more kind of digital looking. So I don't know. I got to get back used to it. Um, I kind of hope I could, I could get this, this fixed. Today's actually not a good day um, for me to have this. Uh, problems with my email. It's Monday. Uh, I get a lot of calls that come in from, well, I used to get a lot of calls. I get a lot of emails now that come in on Mondays. Um, not to mention I'm leaving this weekend. So it's a short week for me. Um, Friday, I'm leaving Friday morning. So technically I have three more days left. Uh, and then tomorrow Santana has uh, an event happening at her school. So I have to cut my day short, get over there, which, which, which is, Wonderful, but just wonderful. Um, I kind of wish it wasn't this week, though, because I had so much to do. But um, other than that, uh, just tracking away, tracking away. A um, few calls coming in. Everything looks pretty stable. I think oh, I think we're going to be okay this this year. I'm, I'm looking out at the market, looking at what everybody else is doing. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, uh, I know we're good. I mean, we've already landed four shows and we're, we're still in uh, February. So we should be cool. And I have a bunch of other ones that are, uh, a couple girls are pricey. So it's not like some of these other acts that can, you know, it's an easy sell. Cover girls are pricey plus there's four people traveling. So it's pretty pricey. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, A-list status. So it's not like people come, you know, anybody can do it. There's a lot of clubs that we can't do because the clubs are too small. Um, even though I try to work with them, see if I can bring it down the numbers a little bit more, depending on the size of the venue. But um, uh, other than that, uh, it's that's just how that is, and I'm cool with that. You know, same thing with Susie. Susie's pretty pricey, so not everyone can afford it. Um, and it's not that they can't afford it; it just doesn't make sense. It's like if you if your venue only hosts 300 people, I mean, what are you going to charge these people? You know. $200 to get into the into the venue. It makes no sense, you know. So, um, but this weekend, I'm, I'm looking forward to this weekend. Uh, for those who don't know, um, Friday, February 28th, Arena Theater, Houston, Texas. And then the next day in Austin, Texas, uh, come and take it live, comes to Cocktails. Cocktails apparently was... Uh, um, was a really popular club back in the day. It sounds really familiar. I think I, I remember it. We've been doing Austin for so many years, so, um, but I kind of forget the names. So, uh, come uh, Wednesday into Thursday, I start to slow down with work, um, start focusing on just getting ready, get the outfits together, get the haircut done, 
and you have to go get, get the maintenance done. That's the thing with you know, having a girl group, you know, you have maintenance, all that stuff, to, it costs money. So um, it, it, it cuts a, a pretty deep groove into the money that you're making on the road, you know. So I had a couple calls that came in last week, uh, new promoters wanting to uh, get information uh, regarding bookings. So uh, I just want to let you guys know, anybody who has any interest like that whatsoever, let me know. Get back to me. Um, either reach out to me. Best way is uh, maybe Facebook Messenger. That might be the best way. But if you have any interest at all um, and you want to just kind of get get an idea of what it, what it takes, what it would cost, if you can actually do it, um, I can walk you through quite a bit of it. I can really um, give you a, a good um, good rundown on what to expect, you know, and it's free of charge, no charge. So, and no obligation to even work with me if it's something you end up wanting to do. But uh, I don't mind sharing the information. I think it's important for the genre, whether you book with me or you book somebody else, with somebody else, it doesn't matter as long as you're booking and we're starting to get shows up there and the, and the artists are working. I think I'm good. I'm good with that. Um, but feel free to give me a call. Um, I can walk you pretty much everything from evaluating the venue that you're working, that you're, that you're trying to deal with, um, the neighborhood, the layout, um, the deal that you have going. I can talk to you about that. Um, then we can talk about um, how to choose an artist. I can contact any of the artists. That's not a problem. I give you the roundabout what they what they're asking and what you're looking at, how your profit's going to be pulled. I give you ideas on um, how to accommodate them. Um, I can tell you, give you ideas on marketing, give you ideas on how to set up the flyers. So I can walk you through the whole thing. There's really nothing, you know. By the time you're done with me, you're you're pretty much ready to. Uh, to book a show and, and and believe it or not it can be quite lucrative you know for some of my promoters to pull in twenty thirty thousand dollars for the night it's not unusual it's not unusual it's not that's not even a lot of money you know i'm talking about for like a small like a small club and when i say small i'm saying stuff maybe uh i don't know between five hundred and a thousand people so you know you can do pretty good you know and then there's a lot of little add-ons that you can do um so it can be a, a good side business, especially you guys who are retired, police officers, fire department, and so on, teachers, um, great um, supplemental income. I mean, it can actually become significant. It can be, become more money than you're making right now. Uh, there's a few little uh, tips I would give you, how to stay consistent, how to you know, maintain the momentum. A lot of people tend to go off. Uh, they'll start with um, doing a really good event. Next thing you know, they're trying to cut corners. And there's ways of cutting corners. Just the way they did it wasn't right. A lot of times that's getting acts that really don't pack. Uh, in the beginning, um, you need strong artists. Because you got to get, and even though you got strong artists, you still have to market, you still have to advertise. You know, some people say, well, you know what? I got this big artist, I, I don't have to do anything. I have a Stevie B. I don't have to do anything. I sit back. People are going to come. No, they're not. They're not going to come. You have to let people know that he's going to be there, you know? And that goes with, with any of the artists. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, and then uh, uh, and then uh, it's about uh, building from there. You know, as far as uh, a lot of times they'll put in uh, they'll put a big act in, and then later on they'll cut it down, or they'll start with a small act, and or they'll start with you know ten small acts, and then they'll, they'll go and try to bring the wrong act to the wrong market. That's you know just because uh, I try to tell our promoters. Eliminate your your the fan your fandom. You can't be a fan. You can't book artists because you're in love with these artists. Yeah, it has to be the right artists because 
you might want to bring an artist that you love that doesn't actually work in that area. So you got to be careful. Um, so I can pretty much uh, give you a really, really solid idea. Now, later on, if you want to experiment and you want to try things and you think you know it and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't agree with you, Latif. Okay, that's fine. But all I'm asking you is when you get started is just agree with me and go along with what, I, what I'm telling you because I'm not going to steer you wrong. The objective here is for you to have a successful event so you can continue booking acts and you can stay in the market. This is this is what's going to ha- help it. Um, if we have one, two, three promoters in the market, that's, that's, that's not good, man. That's not good. We really, really... The, we need so many promoters in the market that they're competing with one another. You know, even if they're in the same city or the same state. This this is how we need to... to and and it, they don't hurt your event. You know, I'm trying to tell people all the time. Like, they'll see the Alan Beck show come in, the big freestyle explosions. And, oh, man, I, I, don't, I don't want to do anything, that, you know, that month because of the freestyle explosion. No, man. No. When those big concerts come to your town, they're making the market hot. They're going to get the fans excited. Um, People who haven't seen these acts in a while um, are going to get to see them. What you get to offer if you're doing a club is you get to offer a more intimate experience. There's two things you can do. You can either book one or two of the acts that were on that event um, there's going to be stipulations as far as how soon after the event you can book them because there are radius clause. So certain acts can only do, you know, a certain uh, um, radius around their event. Uh, once the show is complete and then especially uh, promoting. So if the, even if your, your show is after the freestyle explosion, if you start promoting an act that's on the explosion before the explosion but but your show is until after the explosion you're going to get shut down what's going to happen is the promoter from the big freestyle explosion is going to go to the artist they're going to say hey you're not supposed to do that either you pull out of that show or i'm not going to give you any more shows see it doesn't even have to be a legal situation it doesn't have to be, it's not even about the law at this point or being sued or, no, it's about this this promoter totally kicking you off the tour and you're not doing the tour anymore, you know? Me personally, it's, it's not a good thing to do anyway. See, I don't need that on my contract, even though it's there. I don't violate my promoters, never did. So if I have a promoter and I'm going to book um, even outside that market, I let them know. <laughs> Like if it's right outside, if it's like, you know, several hours away, I'm not, there's no need. I don't even need to bring it up. But um, if I think that there might be a conflict or I think that maybe people might be traveling from that town. So like, let's say you're in Philadelphia. There's some people that might, you know, if the artist is right, they might come from Jersey. So, um, you know, you have to be, you know, this is goes to the artist. You have to be considerate can't always be about the money you have to be considered you know we have a responsibility to make sure that these promoters are okay because if they're not okay they're gonna stop promoting every artist all of us we can pretty much probably count at least 10 or 10 promoters that have been in the business have have been at the business for at least the last 10 years they just disappeared they're not doing anything or they stopped maybe a year ago but I can, I can count about 10 of them right off the bat. And I'm talking about those are pretty recent. You know, now if I go way back, I could talk about the ones from like the early 90s that stopped booking years ago. A few of them died, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, you know, you have to have some sort of moral standard when you're doing, when you're doing these shows. But, you know, I have an incentive to, for you guys as promoters to try your hand just, you know, just kind of see what it's about. You know, you can ask me questions and and it might be for you. It might be that thing that you've been looking for. And if you like to go to clubs, if you enjoy that, oh man, you're going to have a ball. 
you know, um, it's a good feeling. Uh, fans get to know who you are. Artists get to know who you are. Uh, you just gotta handle that the right way. You know, you gotta you gotta know how to 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 um, mix and mingle with your associates, with the fans, as well as with the artists, without getting too caught up in their little circle because they all have their individual dramas. And you don't want to get in there because it kind of dilutes um, the persona that you that you need to create in order to put on a successful event you know you know people are going to look up to you to to be the to, to be this the smart promoter and you gotta have that distance you gotta have that distance if you're buddy buddies with everybody uh you're gonna get played trust me you're gonna get played by somebody so um but like I said, I'm, I'm here. You guys can uh, message me. I get I get at least at least one, maybe one a day, if I had to average it out, because I might get two or three in one day, and then nothing for the next day or two. Where people are calling me uh, or they're messaging me. Sometimes they'll call me and they say, "Hey, um, I was thinking about putting together a, a freestyle event, but I don't know how to start. I don't know where to start, and that's usually where I start. And I come in and." Kind of, they, I, I try to get the information. You know, do you have a place in mind? What city are you from? You know, the place that you have, what do they currently do there now? You know, um, then we'll start talking about money. You know, do you have a budget? You know, and if you don't have money, you're trying to raise money. I can show you some. Of, I give you some ideas that I've learned over the years as well. On that, and on how to raise money, how to pull in investors, or um, uh, what you're doing. You could do, you get people to give you loans, or you could get investors. Believe it or not, freestyle's pretty economical, and you got to realize that deposits are fifty percent. So it's not like you have to have all the money for an artist. You can you can give them fifty percent, and that gives you the power to go out there and start to promote. And in no time, you'll raise that money that you just gave them, or at least have the other half. Um, for when the show starts. So, but there's a lot of potential. And again, anybody's interested, just hit me up. You know where I'm at. But anyway, I'm gonna shut down, guys. I appreciate it. I just want to kind of bring that up to you. I'm gonna get work back to work on this email, see if I can get this thing working um, before I shut down for the night. But uh, that's it for now. Until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.